Hey guys, Chris here for Tumans Guitars and Basses. In today's Guitar Tech Tips, I will tell you what to expect if you want to swap the neck on your guitar or bass. In this series, I want to show you how to fix the most common issues and how to set up your guitars and basses without too many special tools. In theory, it's relatively simple to swap necks on a guitar with a bolt-on neck construction. Undo four screws, remove the old neck, put on a new one, and you're done. Well, <laughs> in reality, in most cases, it's not that simple. If you enjoy Guitar Tech Tips, make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell. Thank you. Why would you even want to swap the neck on a guitar? Well, there could be a number of reasons for that. Let's say you don't like the neck profile. It's too wide, too thin, the, the radius doesn't feel right, etc. Neck profile preference is a very personal thing, of course, and it's, it's very important too. An even better reason for swapping a neck is if the current neck is warped or twisted and you cannot save it anymore with simple fixes such as compensating with fret leveling and such. Let's start with an easy situation. You have a Mexican Fender Strat and you need to swap the neck. You choose a new Mexican made Fender Strat neck and put it on the guitar. That's gonna work of course, that's why Fender offers these fitting replacement necks. That being said, most players I talk to ask me if a Fender neck would fit on their, let's say, Squire Strat or Esta guitar of another brand. The short answer is no. The long answer is you will probably have to modify the neck, the body or both to make it work in a way. If that's worth the risk and the trouble is of course up to you to decide. Just please remember this, as soon as you modify anything, the resale value drops radically and of course you will lose the warranty too. These are the things that could cause problems when you mix brands and models when swapping necks. As told, don't expect a neck to fit perfectly without filing, shortening or filling holes or something like that. Every brand uses a slightly different neck bucket width and length there is no such thing as an industry standard. Also, don't forget that European and Asian made instruments use metric and US and Mexico made guitars use imperial sizes. Next possible issue is having different neck pocket depth. I swapped necks on my Strat a number of times and one of the older necks was way higher than the others. I was struggling with setting up the bridge saddles high enough to match that new neck. You can send the bottom of the neck to fit your guitar better but don't underestimate it. The angle has to be perfect and it has to be perfectly flat too, otherwise it will not work. And that's very hard to do without a proper sanding machine or without measuring tools. Next, expect different position and size for the holes of the neck screws. That's something that people tend to forget even though it's really important. As an example, this is a Harley Benton screw and this is from a fender. And then there's the position of the holes, which is almost always slightly off if you mix brands. You can of course fill all the holes with a dowel and re-drill them, but that definitely requires a woodworking experience and a drill press. It's nearly impossible to be enough precise with a handheld drill. And then there's the amount of frets. You have guitars with 21, 22, even 24 frets and basses with 20 or 21 frets. If we're talking about Fender style necks, where a guitar has more than 21 or bass has more than 20 frets, the fretboard is gonna be longer than the bottom of the neck. That longer fretboard has to sit on the pickguard. If it doesn't have enough clearance, that's obviously a big problem. Next, the two classics, Tellies and Strats, have different neck pocket shapes. It's completely square on a Tele and slightly rounded on a Strat. You should definitely know that if you want to put a Tele neck on a Strat body or the other way around. Also very important to consider the neck angle. Fender style bolt-on necks should run more or less parallel to the body, so without any angle. That makes things easier for the most part. Still, sometimes you do need to use shims with a new neck to have a nice string action. Use proper hardwood shims if necessary. A piece of folded paper will not do any good to the guitar's tone and sustain. Also be careful, even a one degree angle can make a big difference in the playability. It's also important to take a look at the tuner holes. There's a big chance that your old machine heads will not fit the new neck. Vintage tuners will need a narrower hole than more modern ones, so just keep that in mind. 
Also, affordable guitars will almost always have OEM machine heads, which are made by the guitar's manufacturer. In most cases, these will not be compatible with the big machine head brands' products, such as Godot, Grover, Schaller, etc. There's a lot to know about tuners, and it's pretty confusing too, so let me know in the comment section below if you want to see an episode on it. And now, it's time for a test ride. <laughs> Let me know in the comments if you have any questions left. I'd also love to know what you want to see in this series. Don't be afraid of setting up and fixing your guitars yourself. It's time to become your own guitar tech. Welcome to guitar tech.